Thank you for watching this DPL fault tree video by Syncopation Software. In this video, I will provide a brief overview of a DPL fault tree that analyzes the likelihood of a company violating the European Union's new General Data Protection Regulations, which I will refer to hereafter as GDPR. A fault tree is an analytic and communication tool that is used to calculate the probability of a complex event. Let's look at the GDPR fault tree. At the top is an event that represents the most general statement of risk, a GDPR violation. Events in a fault tree are things that can occur with a certain probability. The probability of this general event is difficult to assess. The fault tree provides the tools to analytically and graphically break down the top event into component uncertainties. This fault tree has subtrees which are currently collapsed for viewability. I've used the text of the regulation to break down events until the events are at a level of detail that can be assessed directly. The green elongated ovals in the fault tree are binary events which can be thought of as an uncertainty with two possible outcomes, true or occurrence, or false for non-occurrence. The gray boxes above each of the binary nodes are annotations containing a more detailed description of the event. Taking a closer look at the fault tree, the top event is defined by an OR gate which means it will occur if any of its inputs are true. The blue triangles indicate that the inputs to the top event are connected by NOT connections. In this fault tree, a GDPR violation occurs if the data processing is not lawful, or the data subject's rights are not respected, or the controller processor does not meet their obligations. I'm going to expand out the lawfulness of processing subtree, which covers articles 6 through 9 of the regulation, and will describe the logic of the subtree. The two most common gates in a fault tree are AND and OR gates. AND gates are red and OR gates are yellow. Recall that an OR gate occurs if any one of the inputs occur. An AND gate occurs only if all of its inputs occur. A basic event is the lowest level event whose probability is assessed directly. Events above this level are referred to as derived events. Their probabilities are calculated from the gates below them. Looking at the subtree, I see that the processing of data is lawful if it is based on one of two things, the explicit consent of the subject, or if it is deemed necessary. Looking further down the tree, consent is only valid if an appropriate request is made and the subject has given consent. On the other side, processing is deemed necessary if it is needed for the performance of a contract to which the data subject is party, or it is needed for the legitimate interest of the controller or processor. Note that there is another type of node at the bottom of the fault tree. These blue rounded rectangles are value nodes that store numbers. In this case, they store the probabilities for basic events. Value nodes labeled CC contain a probability for events that are somewhat within the company's control. Those labeled OC contain a probability for events that are out of the company's direct control. Notice the asterisk CC node. This indicates that these value nodes are copies of the original CC node. I'll discuss these probabilities in more detail later. I'll collapse this subtree and will expand the data subject rights subtree. Here, each event is a right of the data subject. The data rights respected is an AND gate, meaning each individual right must be respected for the event to be true, i.e. overall rights are respected. I'll expand out the transparency event, which corresponds to Article 12. Transparency is achieved if clear and concise language is used, and there is a timely response to requests for information made by the data subject. Both events fall in the category of being somewhat under the company's control, as indicated by the value node inputs. There is a similar level of detail included in the model for the remaining rights. I'll collapse this subtree and will expand the controller and processor obligations met subtree. The subtree has a similar structure to that of the data subject rights. Each node is an obligation of the controller or processor, and each individual obligation must be upheld for the overall obligation to be upheld. If you'd like to take a more in-depth look at this fault tree, then I would recommend requesting a free 21-day trial of DPL fault tree and using the link within the video's description to download the workspace. I'll collapse this and we'll toggle the display of the fault tree to a circuit diagram view. A circuit diagram is an alternative way of viewing a fault tree. A circuit diagram uses standard circuit notation to indicate the possible ways in which the top event in a fault tree can be true or false. A larger node representing a light bulb is attached to the left end of the diagram for the top event. The top event bulb in this diagram is yellow, indicating that the light bulb is on, the circuit is closed, and a violation has not occurred. If the top event bulb is gray, the circuit is broken. A broken circuit is equivalent to a GDPR violation occurring. 
The circuit diagram consists of all the basic events in the fault tree, connected by branches, and in OR gates are not displayed as nodes, but instead define the diagram's structure. Its purpose is to visually display which assignments of true and false to the basic events cause a violation to occur. If a basic event is in a fault state, i.e. does not occur, its circle will be green and current is able to flow through. If the basic event is in a true state, i.e. does occur, its circle is red and current is not allowed to flow through. If a not connection is included in the fault tree, the event's name has a tilde symbol next to it. The circuit diagram for this fault tree is very wide, which indicates that there isn't much redundancy within the system, i.e. there are many single points of failure that could result in a violation. In fact, there are 15 single points of failure within the system. A taller circuit diagram would indicate a more resilient system, where many things would have to fail at once for the overall system to fail. I'm going to toggle the state of some of the basic events to see what causes a break in the circuit i.e. a violation to occur. Recall that the CCL and TRTR events were connected to the AND event representing transparency. Clear and concise language must be used, and timely responses to requests must be made for transparency to be upheld. Due to the structure of the fault tree, if transparency is not achieved, data subject rights are not respected, resulting in a violation. So it makes sense that when I toggle either to occur, the circuit is broken and a violation occurs. Now I'm going to toggle back to the fault tree view in order to calculate the probability of a GDPR violation occurring. To do so, I'll select the Calculate Probabilities command within the fault tree analysis group. The probability of a violation is 15%. Keep in mind that for simplification purposes, the probabilities for each basic event in the fault tree is fed by one of three values, OC, or out of the company's direct control, which has a probability of 0.5, UP, unlikely probability, which has a probability of 0.01, and most prevalently CC, somewhat within the company's control, which has a probability of 0.99. In reality, the CC probability isn't known and could depend on a few different factors, such as the compliance actions taken by the company and the rigor of the interpretation of the regulations. Therefore, I've built a decision model companion to the fault tree in which I'll model this input probability as an uncertainty. This is the conclusion of the fault tree portion of the GDPR fault tree video series. I would encourage you to watch the next video in which I will provide an overview of the DPL decision model, explain how it incorporates the fault tree, and we'll look at some decision analysis and sensitivity outputs.